I'm Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch, and in this tutorial, I'll show you the basics of using Particle Illusion 3. When Particle Illusion opens, you'll see a list of the emitters in the currently loaded library in the library window. Only one library can be loaded at a time, but there are a few ways to load another of the dozens of libraries available. One is to right-click in the library window and Load Library, which brings up a standard file dialog with a preview of the emitter thumbnails. You can instead click the library button below the preview window. It's equivalent to using Load Library. Another way to load a library is to right-click in the library window and choose a library from the Quick Load Library menu. A final way is to use the Library Manager, but it is a little more complex so I won't go into it here. You may also want to use Particle View's search function to help you locate specific emitters. I've got another tutorial that covers Particle View. If you want to put the particle effects on top of video, right-click in the Layers window and select Background Image, then select the Image, Image Sequence, or Movie file that you want to load on this layer. You can also double-click the layer thumbnail image as a shortcut. If the video you're loading is a different resolution than the current stage size in Particle Illusion, you'll get a message box that tells you this and asks if you want to change the stage size to fit the size of the video. Usually you want to click Yes. You may also get a warning about the frame rate of the video not matching the frame rate of the project. You usually want to make sure the project frame rate matches the video frame rate. Do this in the Project Settings dialog. If you're not loading a video or, or image, you set the output size for your project in the Project Settings dialog. Now that the video or images are loaded, you can add your particle effects, make any adjustments, and save your output. To save an output movie or image sequence, click the Save Output button, specify the output format, the codec settings if you're saving a movie, and other output options. What output format should you use? If you won't be loading the rendered movie or images into another application, such as your video editor or compositing app, then you may just want to render a movie file. Choose a modern codec that gives you decent quality, something that provides MPEG-4 compression like DivX, XVID, or any of the other MPEG-4 codecs available. If you'll be loading the output into another application for further processing or editing, then you'll want to use a lossless output format to avoid recompressing the video, which can degrade image quality. For image sequences, I recommend PNG. And for movie files on Macs, use QuickTime with the Animation Compressor. On Windows, download and install a good lossless codec like HuffYUV or Lagarith. They're much better than using full frames uncompressed. Since you'll be compositing the rendered particles with other footage, you also want to turn off the background image or movie, if you're using one, and render with an alpha channel. This way the particles can be easily layered over other footage in your editor. I'm Alan Lawrence of WonderTouch. Thanks for watching.